Hey, man. Hey, Alex. How's it going? Good, good. You? Good. Very good. good. Very good. Like the web? Yep. Great. Had a good night. <laughs> cool. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, I know it's late-ish on Friday. Um, and we've all had a couple of really awesome days. Um, so I wanted to take a couple of minutes today to talk a little bit about something which, uh, which I'm very passionate about. Um, so it basically starts with something we at SoundCloud realized earlier this year. Um, we had this one realization that really stuck in our mind um, and something that we can't get out of our head. And it's basically this. Sound will be bigger than video. And it may not seem completely intuitive at first, um, especially from some random Swedish guy on stage, especially when we look at the world and see that the third largest site in the world is a video site. Um, but I want to tell you a couple of reasons for why we believe this is true um, and how sound will become bigger than video. So the first one is about simplicity. If you look at the web over you know, the last 10, 15 years, on the consumer side, a lot of the really powerful consumer products out there, things that have gotten massive traction, one thing that's in common for almost all of them is that they make things very simple. Many of them reduce the barrier to creating something. They make it very simple for anybody to be able to create and share with the world. And one of the absolute simplest ones there is, is Twitter, uh, one of my favorite applications. And you know, Twitter is so simple. It's 140 characters, and that's it. It's very simple to create. What Twitter did was that they took the barrier down from you know, feeling like you have to write a whole blog post to making it okay to publish just a sentence. So we were thinking a lot about simplicity. Um, you know, in the context of SoundCloud, like, you know, and sound, what can we do to make sound so simple to create? And it's actually really straightforward. Everybody carries a small computer in their pocket all the time. And we all know that this is a camera, and we use it for taking pictures and sharing those with the world. But it's also a microphone. So 24-7, you're walking around with a microphone in your pocket. So we added a single record button uh, to the SoundCloud application to make it so that you can, you can create stuff with a single click. And we kind of half-jokingly say that, you know, Twitter is 140 clicks. This is one, so it's 140 times simpler than Twitter. When it's that simple to create, we think that you know, a massive explosion of creativity and of creation happens. And it's a lot simpler to do than putting a video camera up in somebody's face. It's a lot less intrusive. And because that's so simple, I think that's one of the reasons why sound will become bigger than video. Life is better in parallel. If you've been in computer science, you know that parallelization is a very powerful concept, um, something which has dramatically changed how we think about processing. Um, when you can do tasks in general in life in parallel, um, it becomes very powerful. You can imagine that you have a list, or, or say that you've written a text, four pages long. You need to proof, uh, proof ed, uh, read it or to edit it. You could take every single page and send them to, to four different people and get the same editing task done in 25% of the time of what it would take for one person to do it. So parallelizing that task is something very powerful. The challenge with parallelization is that you can only apply it to certain things. You can't do it across everything. So if you look at media consumption, it's a very bad idea to watch a video while you're driving your car. Um, I hope you haven't tried that. It's also not a great idea to read a blog post while driving your car. Um, it's hard to do those things in parallel. One of the awesome things about sound, which you know, I love and make use of every day in my life, is that you can consume it in parallel while doing all these different other things as well. While walking down the street, listening to a news update, um, you know, working, listening to music, waking up in the morning and listening to an update from your friends in the background. 
you can do that in parallel, which means that you have the chance throughout a day of basically consuming up to two, three, maybe four times as much sound as you can consume video. And because of that, because there's those multiple factors of how much more you can consume, I think that's also a key of why sound will be bigger than video. Often when we look at the web and we think about sound, we reduce our scope of thinking uh, a lot. We tend to narrow it down to music. We tend to narrow music down to big artists like 50 Cent and Lady Gaga, who are great artists, are magnificent shining stars. They're so bright shining that we tend to not see the rest. Um, what's really cool in sort of recent years is that this is changing. Um, music creation is going through a dramatic change at the moment. If you go into the Apple App Store on any given week, chances are that one of the top featured apps will be a music-making application. Something like uh, the Gorillaz app, which is really cool, um, or the Korg IMS20, or apps like um, IMTPain from Smule. These apps are so simple that we've basically gone beyond the point of being a musician, being something niche. At this point, everybody in this room is a music maker. You just need to install an app, do a couple of clicks, and you've created music. And a, a number that I like to show the power of that is, if you think about the iTunes catalog, many people think of that as you know, all, the, all the music in the world. It's about 15 million songs. And this application, I'm tipping by Smule that I mentioned, they, their users created over 30 million tracks in six months. So you think of iTunes, you know, 70 years or so of recorded music, everything we've done, 15 million. Six months of one iPad, iPhone application, 30 million tracks. So it's accessible for everybody. So music is a lot more than just the big stars these days. People getting involved creating is a big part of what music is. But even outside of music, there's a whole big world of sound out there as well that we tend to not think about so much. Um, every single news organization out there is publishing sounds uh, on a continuous basis. Um, you, know, you have all the e-books in the world, all the different podcasts, and all this range of audio out there that we tend to not think about. So we think very much about the concept of sound. Sound is sort of the big, the big thing. There's a lot of different sounds. It could be music. It could be um, a parent recording the first words of their kid. It could be Russell Brand recording parts from his new book. Um, or it could be a politician recording a speech. And I think that it's really cool to see the world open up the understanding of what sound is and see that it's not just about music, that it's about all these different things. And when you look at the scale of that, you realize that sound touches almost every, every area out there. And because of that scale and all of that amount of sound, I also think that sound is going to become bigger than video. This is a picture of a brain. Um, I hope it looks like a brain. Um, so sound has a lot of cool properties. Um, I don't know if you know the trick, like, you know, if you learned it when you were a kid, but, you know, when you look, if you watch a, a scary movie, um, I didn't know this as a kid. I was watching Jaws, and I got super scared, um, and didn't know how to not be scared. What I did, my initial reaction, which is pretty natural, is to go like this. Problem is, it doesn't work. You're still really scared, and for like a week after that, I kept hearing the the music and sounds from Jaws, and I thought the sharks were going to come through my bedroom wall. Um, the trick to not be scared when watching a scary movie, which I learned years later from a film music professor, is to go like this. If you, I promise, if you watch any scary movie, and you're feeling frightened, and you press mute, it will turn into a comedy. Instantly, the guy with the chainsaw just looks like a clown. Um, and there's, there's good reason for this. I used to work as a sound designer, and we often said that we were constructing the emotional narrative of a film when we were doing the sound design. And 
we didn't really know why that was so, but it just seemed to be like that. Um, cool thing is that a lot of like brain or neuroscience and brain research now, like the brain is a mess. We don't really know anything about how it works, but we're starting to see some things of how it works. And it turns out that the parts of the brain that perceive sound are directly linked into the part of the brains that generate emotion. So sound is one of the most powerful drivers of emotion that there is. You hear, and then you feel. And feelings are something very, very powerful. It's something that drives a lot of our decision making. It's something that drives a lot of you know, what, we, what we do in, in life. And by having more sound on the web, I think we're going to have, be generating more emotions. And emotions being such a powerful thing, I think that's also going to lead to sound becoming bigger than video on the web. When Gutenberg invented the printing press, um, that was a big moment for society at large. Um, developing tools and techniques that made it easier for people to get to a point where they could read and write was all interlinked and seen as a massive step forward for all of society. We gained literacy, and that was a big step up for all of us. And literacy is defined as both reading and writing. There's two parts to it. It's not just about reading. What I think is really cool over the last sort of uh, five, maybe ten years, if you want to stretch it, is that a lot of these awesome platforms out there that allow us to post videos, that allow us to post um, images, that allow us to post texts, they're basically they're teaching us to be literate in a different way than we have been before. I used to take pictures with the intention of saving the picture. I don't do that anymore. I take pictures to tell stories. Throughout my everyday life, I take pictures and I share those with friends to say something about what's happening in my life. Same thing with video, same thing with blog posts. And what's, what's really cool about that is that you know, we're getting to a point where we're literate in images and videos and being able to communicate through those as well. I don't have to be explicit. I can tell something very specific with a picture. And I really see that as a sort of a big societal move and sort of a next level literacy for all of us. And what we're starting to see now is that sound, which for many years now has been pretty much a read-only medium. You press play, and that's it. You only listen to it. Sound is now becoming a write medium as well. We're all learning to capture in sound, no matter if it's a thought that you record and post, or if it's a piece of music, or if it's just you know, a joke from a friend. We're all learning to write and express through sound. So I think we're all at a point where we're about to, as a society, become sound literate. And the first time we became literate, it turned out to be a big deal. So imagine how cool it is to be on the verge of becoming literate once more. Literacy the first time around had a massive impact. I think it's going to have an equally, if not bigger, impact this time around. I think that's also part of why sound is going to end up being bigger than video. So, running a little short on time. I'm not going to talk so much about SoundCloud. I, I hope you all have seen it, and, and I hope you like it. Um, what we're trying to do is we summarize it in the, in the sentence. We're trying to unmute the web. I feel like life around us in the offline world is so much about sound. You navigate the world through sound. Like it's, a key sense, a big part of the human experience is sound. As soon as we go online, it's silent. We can look at a lot of stuff, we can read a lot of things, but it's very silent, and that's something we want to change. The web shouldn't be silent. So at SoundCloud, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to unmute the web. So to summarize this a little bit, my last 26 seconds, I think that when it's so simple to create that we're talking about a single button, what you've created is something that can be consumed in parallel, so you can consume two, three, four x as much of it. 
think about the vast range of different sounds that are out there, from 50 Cent to um, a joke from my cousin. If you think of the emotional power that sound adds, and you think of us all being on the verge of literacy, becoming literate again, I think that for us, it's at least very clear that sound will be bigger than video. And the really cool part around it is that we'll all be able to say that we became literate once again. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thanks very much. Thanks, man. So we just got the results. So I will. Uh, while we uh, we are calling our uh, uh, judges back on stage, I just wanted to uh, show you a few highlights. I don't know if we can get my uh, my iPad up from our uh, uh, partners uh, from uh, Salesforce and um, and from uh, Radian Six. Uh, Sabine, can I have my uh, iPad on screen? Here we go. And so they've, they've been measuring the social uh, <laughs> noise. I would say that we've been making, and so the number of tweets, number of Facebook uh, updates, everything. And so here's a comparison between the web 2010 and the web 2011. Uh, we got 36% uh, more social mentions, 50,000 uh, in uh, the web 2010, and nearly 70,000 mentions in uh, the web 2011, you can see here. And um, also, the, by, by the time of hour, we, what's interesting is even when this room is, is closed because we sleep or we party like yesterday, then there is a, 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 a live stream that starts again and all the videos on YouTube uh, that are watched in California and other places. Um, and so the, actually the mentions keep going. Another uh, thing that Radian 6 has done is uh, 300, as seen, is 300% more social mentions of speakers themselves. Um, and last year it was uh, Gary V, who was our most uh, quoted mentioned speaker at the web with uh, four and a half uh, thousand social mentions of speakers and 700 for uh, Gary V only. And this year we got. Um, we, we got 18,000 social mentions of speakers, so this is nearly five, four times more. And, uh, and Eric Schmidt uh, got 4.6% of the shares and, uh, and 3,200 um, social mentions. This is all going to be on our web blog. Without uh, further ado, so thank you, Radiant 6 and Salesforce, for this, and thank you all for uh, uh, this amazing conversation online. Chris Shipley, do you have results? Can you join me on stage? We do have results after heated deliberations. Our judges can join us. Welcome back. How, how tough was it? It, it was yeah? a very spirited debate. I think uh, it uh, got down to some arm wrestling and hair pulling and things. But we, we, we did come up with uh, the three finalists, uh, the rank order. All right. Well, I think we can uh, start calling the, the finalists. So it was, a, again, as I said, a very heated debate. Uh, three great companies that have come to the end of this competition. And uh, I'm very pleased to announce the third place winner, and that is Babelverse. Congratulations. Congratulations. Our second place finisher is Hey Crowd. Oh, no, stay. Stay with us. Stay with us, Bob Elvers. Uh, friends. Congratulations, stay, stay Hey us. Crowd. Stay with Big us. Hand. We'll take a picture. Stay with us. Stay here. And so I guess it should be clear to you all that the winner of the Lueb 11 startup competition is Be Into. Congratulations, Be Into. And now I would like to uh, uh, call, would you like to do a few words with a startup, Chris? Well, I, we always will take advantage of because these are entrepreneurs you always take in. Congratulations. Well, thanks a lot, and uh, thanks for the great opportunity. It was really a great experience for us. 
and very good luck to you. Congratulations also to, to you. Very nice job. Download Hey Crowd. <laughs> and gentlemen, thank you very much for participating and congratulations and good luck to the business. Thank you to everyone in Greece and Chile and thank you to everyone out there. So and you, stay, you stay there because we have one more. Um, we, I'd like to call on stage now Crystal Schuber from Google who will announce the People's Choice winner. winner. Hi, um, very glad to be here today. Um, I know you've seen a lot, quite a lot of Google today and this week, right? Uh, but the startup competition is something very special to us. As a former startup, uh, quite a successful one, uh, we think it's really important to help young entrepreneurs succeed, uh, help build the new wave, next generation of online giants, because we think uh, an online and vibrant community is a more successful one and we all benefit from it. Uh, so before I present uh, the winning startup, um, just a couple of things I'd like to uh, share with entrepreneurs in the room. And there are core principles that made the success of Google possible and that I think might be interesting for young entrepreneurs. The first one is entrepreneurship and risk-taking. That's something that's very dear to a heart. It's part of our DNA. It's how we work. Um, you may know that Many Googlers are encouraged to work 20% of their time on a project that's not related to their day-to-day -day work. Um, out of this project came Gmail, for example. Um, what you may not know is that for one successful product like that, we have many that fail. And that's something we really encourage. We encourage people to try new stuff. Launch and iterate is uh, one of our motto at Google, so that's something I like to encourage entrepreneurs to do is don't be afraid of failure. Try new stuff, launch, get user feedback, fail, and if you fail, get the learning from it, uh, and then try again. And Sorry. the second thing uh, is really collaboration. I know uh, for a startup, you might have the tendency to work on your own, but I think it's really important uh, to be part of an ecosystem and leverage a community. So the startup that um, won the People Choice Award uh, is a startup that I think really leveraged the user, uh, put them at the center, um, made the user relevant, really one of the core principle, and really nailed Solomo. So I'm very proud to uh, announce uh, Ecor and uh, Danielle and David. Thank you. Well, well done. <laughs>